Hi guys and welcome back to the workshop. So today's going to be a really exciting day because we're going to be making some gears in the workshop which is the first ever time I've done this sort of job. So if you watched the last video you'd have seen me unbox this dividing head and have a little play around with it. Well today we're going to take that one step further and using some gear cutters that I bought on eBay. These are just your standard import gear cutters, modular one and conveniently I've 3D printed a really nice box for them to go into we're going to be making a pair of 100 tooth modular one gears so stay tuned if you've ever wondered how to cut gears in a home hobby shop this video might just help you out before we get started today then I thought we'll just head over to Fusion 360 where we'll have a quick look at the 100 tooth modular one gear that we're going to be making and just take some dimensions off of this because it's going to make making this gear really easy if we know what dimensions we need to hit. So first of all this is the gear that we're going to be making today. It's got a 12mm through hole with a 3mm keyway and like I said it's a hundred tooth. So if we head over to the top here and get up the inspect measure we can just look at the sort of outer diameter which we need our stock to be. So centre to centre, we're looking at about 102 millimetres. So conveniently I've ordered some aluminium stock already cut to 102 mil. So we're going to have no turning down required for this. Next we need to know the sort of inner diameter of the gear set. So to do that simply I'm just going to select the inner sort of part of the gear as such. And we've got 97.5. So the difference between those two is 4.5 millimetres. So we know that we need to add half of that and take a 2.25 millimetre depth of cut when we're going to be turning down this gear. So next operation is to take my gear blanks over to the lathe where we're going to be facing them down, drilling them out and prepping them ready to go onto the dividing head. Using a set of parallels then, I get the work fairly perpendicular to the ways of the lathe, ready to face it off. With both the gear blanks now faced off, it's time to centre drill and drill these out to accept a 12mm arbor so I can mount this securely on the dividing head without any movement. So I'm going to chuck these back in the chuck now and drill them out. And just like that, my two gear blanks are all drilled out now. I've cheated a little bit in the sense that I've not made an arbor. I've used this M12 bolt with a lock nut each side. And I just centre drilled that on the lathe just to give my centre support somewhere to go. So next thing to do now is chuck this over onto the dividing head. Actually, before we do so, let's talk about the dividing head and how we're going to set this thing up to cut a 100 gear tooth. So, as I said in the last video, this dividing head has got a 40 to 1 gear reduction. So what that means in theory is 40 turns of this handle will result in one full turn of the chuck. Which, that would be great if we want to cut a 40 tooth gear. It just means we'll turn this one full rotation, take a cut, turn it another full rotation and take another cut. But we don't want to cut a 40 tooth gear, we want to cut a 100 tooth. So if we have that 40 to 1 gear reduction in mind, so 40 over here and 1 to here, we want to get that to 100. So if we do 1 divided by 100 
and 40 divided by 100. That gives us a sort of better ratio we can work with to decide what size dividing plate we need. So 40 over 100, you can simplify that down to 4 over 10. Now looking through the selection of dividing plates we've got here, I've not got any dividing plates with a 10 hole pattern, but something that I do have, I have a dividing plate with a 20 hole pattern. So that 4 over 10, we can now in theory double that to make that 8 over 20. I say double it, that's exactly the same fraction. All we've done is we've doubled the denominator, which means we've got to double the bit on top as well. So we've now got a 20 hole plate and we know that each cut we do, we have to move this round eight holes at a time. So that gives us a little bit of a better idea of how we're gonna get this done. Again, this sort of formula, as long as you leave it in divisions, it will work for any sort of gears that you need. Say for example, you needed a 60 gear tooth. Again, all you would do is you would divide the 40 by the 60, simplify that down to two thirds, and then you'd find a plate more suitable to that. So say for example, you had a 30 hold plate, you'd know every time you'd be moving that round 20 holes and taking a cut. So I'm gonna get this plate on now and stop waffling on. And when we come back, I'll quickly run through how I'm gonna set this cutter up before actually doing some cuts and starting to make these gears. Now to get this cutting tool on center line, all I'm doing before putting the work in the chuck is I'm just lowering the cutter down to the end of the dead center here. That way I know by eye this is gonna be on center line. And now with the cutter on center line and everything locked out, I can now begin to bring my workpiece in and get all this secure. So first of all, I'm gonna do the chuck up, pull it all the way so I know it's as far out as it will go, nip that up, and then we're just gonna bring the dead center in just to secure that off. And the last final thing to do now before we get cutting is just set the depth of cut. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna wind my table towards the cutter just so it touches off. With this cutter now touching off on the workpiece, I'm gonna move it away, and now I can begin to set my depth of cut, which is gonna be 2.25 millimeters. So, I'm gonna zero out the DRO, and do it off of that reading. And 2.25. Table all locked, we're ready to start cutting our first gear in the workshop. To keep track of where I am when doing this gear, I'm using the sector arms to space out eight holes and after each cut, I'm moving the sector arms around just so I know where to drop the pin. It means each time I'm not having to count eight holes and it makes this process a lot more quicker.
It was at this moment I knew I'd messed up. I'd managed to cut a hundred tooth gear successfully. Woohoo! Only thing is, I don't have aluminium because I didn't have much faith in my first attempt. But it went really well. So, I'm going to have to do this another time out of steel. But for now, let's whip this off, go champ for the edges, take it over to the bench and let's have a look at these gears. With all that being done now, we've got two modular 100 tooth gears. And I've got to admit, for my first time ever cutting gears, that has gone surprisingly well. So, I'm going to give you guys a bit of advice, which I've learned from doing this, is, let's see if I can find a bit. So you see here, I've got a little bit of a flat spot on the start of the gear. And what that was, is basically me turning the dividing head too soon, when the cutter wasn't fully clear of the work, because obviously on the sound of the mill, it sounds like it cuts all the way through, but then once you turn that gear, it's then fresh material and starts to cut in a little bit. So if you're gonna do these at home, just make sure you've got the cutter way clear of the work before doing any turning with the dividing head. So final thing I'm gonna do now, I wanna quickly file a little keyway into this. Luckily it's not a massive keyway, it's only three mil. And then we'll stick these on the mini lathe and see exactly how they work. So over on the mini lathe then, and we're gonna basically swap out the gears for the 100 tooth gears that we've just made. So previous to this, the slowest feed rate we used to be able to achieve was 0.083 millimeters per revolution. So hopefully by swapping out these two 80 gears here with 100 tooth gears, we should get a greater gear reduction, giving the power feed a much slower travel. So swap these out and we'll see what we're left with. And just like that, the new gears are now on the mini lathe, all spinning lovely. So I've not really considered this in the design process, just because other people online have done 100 tooth gears and I've not really come across this issue, but unfortunately on the Walco WM180, I can't now fit the protective cover over, which means I'm gonna have to find a way of holding this safety switch in so I can test these gears out and see how good the final cut is. So while I find a way to prop that up, you sit back and enjoy and when we come back, we'll be seeing a lovely finishing pass, hopefully. So thank you for watching today's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been something new for me and hopefully it'll be something new for you if you think of cutting gears yourself. For now though, guys, have a good week and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys.